Welcome to my channel, Living Linux. By now, you probably already heard that the Raspberry Pi 5 is coming and perhaps you've already seen some reviews. Um, because as they say, they are announcing it before the actual release and they already send out some boards to some YouTube channels and probably also some other media. So they're launching the four gigabyte variant and the eight gigabyte variant first. And excluding taxes or before taxes, that's $60 for the four gigabyte variant and $80 for the eight gigabyte variant. So I think in the EU, that's probably roughly around 75 euros for the four gigabyte variant, including tax and around 100 euros for the eight gigabyte variant, including tax. So the form factor is for the most part the same, although they switch the ethernet port to the other side. So that means also that your cases for the Raspberry Pi 4 probably uh, won't fit anymore. They dropped the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and I think they said that they added one more screen connector. And well, of course they upgraded the CPU. So there's four big cores, A76 at 2.4 gigahertz. And the Raspberry Pi 4 had A72 cores. And depending on when you bought it, 1.5 gigahertz or 1.8 gigahertz out of the box. Although it is possible to overclock the Raspberry Pi 4 quite easily. So they stuck with the video core GPU, although one newer generation. And I think they said that you get the open source GPU drivers supporting OpenGL ES 3.1 and hopefully also Vulkan 1.2. And this time you can connect two 4K screens. And previously that was just one 4K screen. Um, this is a bit uh, well, I hope this is just incomplete. I mean, the HEVC decoder, um, let's just say that's nice if you have like Blu-rays, something like that. But for something like YouTube, I think you would need uh, VP9 and or AV1. So yeah, I haven't heard anything about AV1, but it wouldn't surprise me if you don't get a hardware decoder for AV1. Now I have to say that uh, the wireless has always been uh, very good with a Pi 4. And the same goes with the Pi 5. And I think it's a good deal that you get it standard on the Pi 5. So, and this is also a good thing. Now you get a uh, high speed micro SD. The only thing is, is that of course you need to uh, limit the amount of writes as much as possible because yeah, some people say that you can really kill a micro SD card in a Raspberry Pi quite quickly if you're not careful with it. Uh, it seems that the USB 3 ports that they've also had a bit of an upgrade. 
that you can now do simultaneous 5 gigabits per second on both ports simultaneously. Um, and the other two ports are USB 2.0. Um, they settled for gigabit Ethernet. Um, yeah, I mean, like for, for the price, I guess that's okay. But um, I think with, for instance, like modern SBCs, um, sometimes you also see 2.5 gigabit Ethernet and sometimes even dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Uh, the MIPI camera display transceivers there's a PCIe 2.0 interface, although I think people said that it is a custom interface. So um, some people, they might still remember that uh, Jeff Gerling connected a external GPU card. Um, I think it was on the CM4 because it had a PCIe connector. Uh, so yeah, probably s I wouldn't be surprised someone will try to do the same with the Raspberry Pi 5. There's still the GPIO pins. There's a real-time clock and there's also an accessory that you can add a battery for the real-time clock and you get a power button. So yeah, all in all, I think considering the price, um, it's, it's, it's a good deal. It's in my opinion, not something like really special um, because if you add the tax, then I have the feeling that you get quite close to something like an Orange Pi 5 and the Orange Pi 5 has four additional efficiency CPU cores. So when you have something that uh, scales very good on uh, multi threads, then the rock chip RK3588 is the better chip and yeah, I have the suspicion that the GPU um, on the Rockchip RK3588 is probably faster than on the Raspberry Pi 5. But yeah, we have to wait for some benchmarks. Um, but yeah, Raspberry Pis uh, are not exactly known for fast GPUs. Um, some other things is that, um, yeah, they're, now that they're also mentioning power management, um, yeah, it is advised to get the charger from Raspberry Pi themselves, uh, People say that with uh, five volts, three amps, you can boot the Raspberry Pi 5, um, but it means that you don't have much um, headroom. For instance, if you connect an external uh, SATA drive, something like that, uh, so that perhaps you need to use a uh, powered USB hub uh, just to make sure that you have enough power uh, if you're not buying the um, power supply from Raspberry Pi themselves because I think they say that this one is uh, 5 volts, 5 ampere. So, um, you have the option to 
uh, get a cheap plastic case with a fan because it is advised to um, add some cooling to the Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, $10 for a plastic case with a fan, that's a, that's a fair price. So there's nothing to complain about that one. You can also have the active cooler. Um, so I, I already ordered a Raspberry Pi 5 and hopefully by the end of October I, uh, it will arrive. Um, what I'm hoping is, is that I'm that I can use this active cooler actually inside uh, this plastic case. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I mean, like they present it as if uh, you have to choose between them, but uh, we'll see. We'll see about that once it gets delivered. Um, yeah, so yeah, here there is the M2 hat, so that way it's is possible to add a NVMe SSD, um, not the uh, regular ones. Uh, I think that's like eight centimeters because the Raspberry Pi is not that long. But uh, you could put one that is similar for, let's just say, a Steam Deck um, in here. The only thing that has me a little bit worried is, is that if it really is going to be a hat that is placed like this, then what is going to happen with the cooling of the chip? Uh, so, and yeah, it also means that if you get a hat like this, then I'm really wondering if you can still use the active cooler. Uh, my guess is not, but yeah, we'll see. And even if it does fit, then you can wonder uh, what will happen to the airflow. So as you might notice, I'm not very enthusiastic about the Raspberry Pi 5, and you might wonder why I still ordered it. Uh, well, to be honest, um, not getting a Raspberry Pi 5, um, yeah, that's probably going to limit me in the possibilities to attract new traffic to my YouTube channel. Um, yeah, I'm still a fan of the Rockchip RK3588 boards. Of course, I would love to see some more development in the open source GPU and VPU drivers. And I think that is one of the things that the Raspberry Pi Foundation um, is doing a better job than, for instance, Rockchip. Um, yeah, perhaps you can argue that the Raspberry Pi Foundation also has uh, more uh, financial means to make sure that you do get the open source drivers because um, the Raspberry Pi Foundation is working together with Igalia and they probably um, paid some serious money to Igalia to get the drivers. And perhaps uh, Rockchip is in that sense perhaps a bit stingy and that could explain why it's not happening as fast for the Rockchip RK3588. So um, I hope I will get my Raspberry Pi 5 by the end of this month. So until then, I probably won't have any news on the Raspberry Pi 5. So that's all for now. And I hope to see you again in my next video.